Hello guys, a few weeks ago I received a package from Royal Talents. It contained their water mixable oil paints. And in this video we are going to test them. Cobra paints don't need oil or turpentine to dilute them. You can use water, as if it's acrylics or watercolors. But still it's a real oil paint. So you can try your usual techniques like glazing or impasto. I've been using traditional oil paints for years and I was very suspicious about this whole idea of a water mixable oil paint. Also, from my kitchen experience, I know that oil and water aren't best friends. I must admit that my expectations were pretty low. I thought that this paint is going to be okay. You know this type of okay when you don't want to offend the person who cooked the meal. So you'll eat it, but you will never ask for this dish again. So without further ado, let's start painting. For my water-based experiment, I've decided to work on a theme that is common for me – glowing hands. I've already painted a bunch of similar artworks, so it will help me to feel the difference between paints easier. The first thing that I noticed is that cobra paints are very soft. They have a creamy texture, while my usual oil paints are thicker and stiffer. It was strange to use water instead of my usual mix of oil and white spirit. I kept trying to dip the brush into my old dipper instead of a pot with water. You can even spot these moments on the video. In terms of colors, I didn't feel any big difference. I was mixing as usual. I've read somewhere that water mixable oil paints dry faster than usual ones. That's why you can see me touching the surface with my finger quite a lot. Here's the thing. Umbers are known for their relatively fast drying time. Also, the canvas that I was using wasn't the best quality. Usually, if I work with traditional oils on this type of surfaces, all dark mixes with burnt umber dry incredibly fast. In the middle of the working day, I can't even blend them, because all the oil from the paint absorbed into the canvas. So, my first layers are usually rough. I have to wait until the paint dries to the touch, oil the painting and then continue. So the biggest surprise of the first day was that there are no dry matte spots. Everything was equally wet, and I couldn't believe that. One more thing that was a surprise for me is the amount of time that you need to clean brushes after the painting session. I usually spend a lot of time trying to wash out all the paint from the brushes using soap. And then I have to spend a lot of time washing out the soap from brushes. In this case, the whole process took me a couple minutes. It felt like magic. At the end of the working day, I wanted to show the painting to my husband. And the first thing that he said when he came to the room was, there is no smell. It was a surprise for him, because I've created the oil painting and didn't stink. The next day, I kept mixing and blending colors. They were as wet and movable as at the first day. I've noticed one feature of this paint. It has more shine than traditional oils, which makes the filming process a bit more challenging. I usually rotate the canvas while working, to keep eyes fresh. This time I couldn't turn it to the side. Because thus you won't see a thing, except for the light from a bulb. It will be pretty annoying if you already get used to matte paintings. I've read that there is a matte varnish for these paints, that will take away all the gloss. However, you can apply it 6 months after the completion of the painting. Definitely not the quickest solution. By the way, the whole process of creating this painting with my comments will be available on my Patreon, so don't forget to check it. There was almost a week break between my painting sessions. The paint dried and I was ready to start. But then I understood that I have a problem. I usually oil out the painting between layers. It helps to freshen up colors. This painting didn't crave for oil, but was a bit dry. And there was a problem. I can't take my usual oil and just do my routine, because it may not mix properly with fresh paint diluted with water. It turned out that you need to have a cobra painting medium to do that. And of course I didn't want to go and buy it. I just wanted to finish the painting, so I kept working at my own risk. It was harder to blend colors, but overall it was fine. And here the almost finished painting. I wasn't sure if the experiment will be successful, but the painting turned out quite nice. I thought that my experience of painting with water mixable oil paints will be completely different from my usual traditional oils. 
but it wasn't that very similar. But I think that I didn't test enough features of this paint. What about dripping water and bold brush strokes? So I had to make one more demonstration. This time I was using an oil paper pad instead of a canvas. I started from adding a very dilute paint, and immediately it affected the paper. Because, well, I don't know what I was expecting from adding water to paper. But after a few minutes the paper turned back to normal, so I kept working. This time using less water. I was worried that this paint is too soft for bold brush strokes. But it turned out that no, it's not. It has a good consistency and can keep the shape. And there was a pleasant discovery. I could just wipe off brush strokes that I didn't like. No traces left. I dumped the paper handkerchief into water and wipe off the unnecessary part. That's the thing that I was missing in working with traditional oil paints. It was well and wet study and I had no problems with cobra paint whatsoever. They were mixing and blending greatly. I've tried to find any downsides, but I couldn't. And especially considering how little time I spent washing all these different brushes after the day of painting, it was amazing. After all this practice, I've decided to dig deeper into the theory and find out what the company says about these paints and the way you should use them. Probably I should have done it before practicing, but... What can I say? I think I just like surprises. Just like any other oil paint, this one is consists of a pigment and a drying oil. And all the magic comes from a plant-based emulsifier. I'm not sure how it works and probably I don't want to know because I want to keep the magic. What surprised me is the fact that you can mix cobra paints with traditional oil paints. But if you want to keep the water mixable option, you need to have two times more cobra paints in your mix. After the paint dries, it acts like traditional oil paint, so you can freshen it up with water. And one of the most important thing – prices. I've checked them at jacksonsart.com and here's what I found out. Royal Towns has two series of cobra oil paints, a student version and a professional one. I was trying the one that is called Artist. And it's a fancier version. It turned out that prices for Cobra oil paints are somewhere in between Van Gogh and Rembrandt. So I must warn you that they're not the cheapest. And at the same time, they're not the most expensive. And as with other oil paints, Cobra has a series of different mediums. I've seen a painting paste, glazing, quick drying and painting mediums. I'm planning to buy a painting paste to see how it will affect the thickness of paint. As for painting medium, I would recommend buying it, especially if you are working in layers and usually like to oil out your paintings. Cobra paints are softer than traditional one, and I feel that you'll need more of it to change the color of the mix, so the consumption will be higher. However, it's not a big problem considering that you don't need to buy all that expensive solvents. I've decided to compare three different oil paint series from the same brand. On the left you can see Van Gogh, in the middle is Cobra, and on the right is Rembrandt. I took Burnt Umber because they're the only color that I have in all three series. I'm not sure if you can see it on the video, but the Van Gogh one is the thickest of them, while Rembrandt and Cobra have a very similar texture. Now you can see how all of them look on canvas paper. Cobra was the easiest to blend and take the excess off. For some artists it can be a downside, while for others an advantage. Here are a few reasons why I'll definitely keep using Cobra oil paints. The reason number one is that I work from home, and my flat is pretty small. I usually use odorless solvents, but still most of them have smell. Not a very intense one, but notable. And it's a bit annoying to always be surrounded by this smell. And even if you'll find the one that doesn't have any smell at all, it still has a danger. It's pretty easy to forget that this liquid is dangerous, because it looks and feels like water. And still, you always have to keep in mind the toxicity of it. The reason number two is that I have a dog and I'm pretty clumsy. There were a lot of times when I accidentally spilled white spirit, and I had to rush to wipe it off, because I was afraid that the dog will come to sniff it. With water mixable paints, you don't need to worry about that. The third reason is that my skin is very dry and easily irritated, especially on hands. I've tried to use gloves, but I couldn't do that for some sweaty reasons. 
and a nice bonus that I'll be able to take this paint with me to a vacation. I'm already craving for a plein air, hustle-free oil paint status. However, there is one reason why I don't think that in the near future I'll switch to using only Cobra oil paints. And I can show you why. Here is the reason. Hundreds of dollars that I spent on all these oil paints. But I'll definitely be using Cobra paints a lot. So that was my conclusion. I hope that this video was useful. And I'll be grateful if you leave a comment or press the like button. See you soon! Hello guys! A few weeks ago I received a... Иди копать. Молодец.